Are you afraid of dying? No. Not at all. Do you think you go somewhere? Uh, no. The one thing I can't understand, I can't grasp my mind around, I feel when you die, there's just nothing. It's like when you're asleep and you're not dreaming. But I can't imagine nothingness lasting forever. That's what That's I, the thing that I cannot... I get. can't grasp. To not exist yeah. forever. Forever. When does forever end? The Bible teaches when you die, you do not go to heaven. You do not go to hell. You do not go to purgatory. You cease to exist, awaiting the judgment. And there's a few Bible verses to back this up. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That's Genesis chapter two, verse seven. Questions you could ask yourself. If people go to heaven when they die, why did Jesus bring Lazarus, his friend, back from the dead? I think the best way to describe this would be like a light bulb and someone turning on the electricity. The result is life or light. The light bulb is not the light. The electricity is not the light, but together they make the light. So the breath of God or the spirit of God is the power from God into the body that makes a living being, or we could say a living soul. Uh, there's another verse. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. That's Ecclesiastes 12:7. This is where we can get lost in the sauce. So stay with me for a second. The spirit is not what you think. Uh, so what is this spirit that returns to God at death? Because James 2.26 says the body without the spirit is dead. And Job 27.3 describes how uh, the spirit of God is in my nostrils. So the spirit that returns to God at death is the breath of life. Nowhere in all of the Bible or scripture does the spirit have any cognizance. It, it doesn't have any life or wisdom or feelings like a person would. It is the breath of life and nothing more. So a soul is a living being not some spirit of a ghost living inside of us. You know, many Christians teach that souls go to heaven when we die, but the Bible says, the soul that sins, it shall die, Ezekiel 18, 20. Or uh, Job 4, 17, man is mortal. And 1 Timothy 6, it describes how only God is immortal. So the concept of an undying immortal soul is not found in the Bible. So when people say they talk to their dead loved ones, and the question really is, who are they talking to? The answer is demons. And we're gonna talk more on that in part two. As you guys look in the videos, a lot of these preachers, a lot of these people in these churches, and, and, and they teach about when you die, you go to heaven or you go to hell, which is absolutely false and is a doctrine of devils. The Bible nowhere tells you that when you die, you go to heaven or hell. The Bible compares death to a sleep, and it's not, it's a conscious sleep that you don't know what's going on. It is basically, when you die, your breath goes back to God that gave it and your the grave is the resting uh, place. Not you go to heaven or hell. And a lot of people get this context from, to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. That has nothing to do with that when you what happens when you die that has nothing to do with what where you go exactly when you die and we're going to prove that here and the first thing we want to break this down is by looking at number one how do humans come come into place in this planet and we're going to start with the uh, genesis 2 verses 7 and genesis 2 verses 7 says the lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul or a living being, which means man became a living person after God breathed the breath of life, after he formed them, he breathed the breath of life into man's nostrils. Oh, what it's talking about is the elements God used to create man and how it formed. God didn't place a ghost inside of you. He didn't do that. You are a soul. You are a living being. You don't have something living inside of you. That is false in the doctrine of demons. And the devil's going to use this uh, deception to deceive a lot of sincere Christians who might think, oh, my grandmother's up there in heaven. My father died in heaven. Or my son, he was he was dealing with drugs and doing different things. Is he in hell? Whatever. The answer is no. But we need to look at the Bible, not by looking at opinion. That doesn't make any sense. And we're gonna look at what happens when a person dies. The part that a lot of people confuse. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7. When you 
a die, the spirit, the breath that goes back to him, the spirit that goes back to God who gave it, which means, and we're going to find out what is a spirit, the spirit, and we're going to read this James verses two, verse 26 says the body without the spirit is dead, which say, what is it talking about the spirit without the body? And we're going to look at that in verse Job verses 27, verse three, to get very a uh, clear definition. The spirit of God is in my nostrils, which means the breath of the breath of God, the breath of life, which God breathed into man's nostrils is the spirit. You're like, wait a sec. I don't have a ghost inside of me. No, you don't. Nowhere in the Bible it says that the breath of life goes back to God, not a ghost figure that, oh, you have a ghost living inside of you. That is a lie. That's a doctrine of the devils. And then we're going to look at what is a soul? The Lord formed man out of the desert of the ground, breathing to his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. We already looked at the text, but let's go back over it. Let's understand what a soul. A soul is a living being. A soul is a combination of two things, the body plus the breath. A soul cannot exist unless the body and the breath are combined. God words teaches that we are souls, not that we have souls. We are the living beings. We don't have a living being inside of us. Again, we just learned the breath of life that that is a spirit, not that we have a spirit. The breath of life in our nostrils is a spirit. So it's talking about the breath. The breath goes back to God who gave it. So that's what the context of the scripture is. And the soul is you are that living being. You don't have this living being in the movies that they tell you about Casper, the ghost, whatever inside of you. We discuss it. What happens to the soul? What do souls die? And the Bible says the soul that sinneth, it shall die. That is Ezekiel 18 verse 20. That's saying that when you sin, you are subject to death and you will die in this physical life. But if you live in Jesus Christ, you will gain eternal life and live with God forever. Uh, the Bible also says man is mortal. And that's verse, that's Job verses four through four, chapter four, verse 17. Man is mortal. We don't have immortality. God only has, and we're looking at first Timothy six, verse 15, 16, that God only has immortality. And that's what it says in those verses. Now we're going to look at, do good people go to heaven when they die? And we're going to take a look at John verses chapter five, verse 28, verses 29. And the Bible says, all who in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. The Bible says all who in the graves that are good will hear his voice and come forth. So how, why would Jesus come back if you're already in heaven? It makes no sense. Why would he come back? Oh, he give, he's giving, giving the old body and creating. He's resurrecting you. He doesn't need the body. He can do whatever he wants, but he's coming back because you're down here in the graves. And, and this is Acts chapter two, verses 29 to 34. David is both buried and his tomb is with us to this day. For David did not ascend to the heavens. Well, if King David's not in heaven right now, is your grandmother in heaven, your father, your brother, your sister, your friends, or in hell? No, 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 no. That is a false lie. And Joel 17, verse 13, if I wait, the grave is mine house. People do not go to heaven when they die. They are asleep. That's when Jesus told Lazarus he is sleeping. And he told about the little girl that said she sleeps. Uh, and they were like confused. Of, what do you mean sleeping? Well, she's act technically dead, but she's in a long rest. She's not in heaven. Lazarus wasn't in heaven. He didn't know nothing when he was resurrected. There's no account of that. So that can't be true what people are saying because it makes no sense. Let the Bible interpretate itself. Stop trying to put these wrong definitions because guess what? If this doctrine's in the church and people believe that you're that you're going, when you die, you're going to heaven or hell right now, then the devil can use that and deceive as many as people as possible and can impersonate your dead loved ones. And we're gonna look at how much does a person know when they die? When in Ecclesiastes verses nine, verses five, six, and 10. And it says, the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They have no more reward for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love, their hatred, their envy have now perished. Never more will they have shared anything underneath the sun. There is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. That means when you die, there is absolutely nothing. You don't know nothing. You don't come back in this lifetime and haunt people. You have no knowledge of people even seeing you. 
Oh, the death is an unconscious sleep. It's like you be in a coma. You don't know what's going around you. You are dead. You are asleep. You're not, you're not alive. There is no you die and go to heaven or you go to hell. That became a doctrines of devils that came in the church based on the Roman Catholic Church teaching. Remember, Martin Luther, that was a Roman Catholic priest and many other uh, reformers, they understood the truth when they when they finally read the Bible and let the Bible tell itself that this was a doctrine of demons introduced to church. And why are still past and people teaching it? Some might not know. And some are working with the devil because they're in sheep clothing that the Bible describes as these people are to deceive the people of God. Try to deceive them. And a lot of Christians are deceived and they don't know. Oh, my dad is in heaven smiling. No, he's not. Oh, my son must be in hell because this is no, that's not true. It is unconscious to sleep you have to wait for the resurrection if they're going to the resurrection of life or the resurrection of damnation we just learn about that oh also let me read this verse psalms 115 verse 17 this makes it clear the dead do not praise the lord if you saying that your grandmother in heaven or whatever you said you go to heaven when you die then when you praise the lord it says the bible says the dead do not praise the lord does the dead communicate with people here? Do the dead communicate with their loved ones? Christians are deceived. And Joe 14, 12 verses 21, man lies down and does not rise till the heavens are no more. They will not awake, nor be rose from their sleep. His sons come to honor and he does not know it. They brought, they are brought low and he does not perceive it. That is Job 14, verse 12 and 21. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 6. Nevermore will they have shared anything underneath the sun, which means they have nothing to do in this lifetime no more once they die. So there is no people coming back from the dead, walking around here without Jesus, without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, without the resurrection of the living, that Jesus will say, and the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise. When Jesus calls for the people of God to rise, then that the people that died in Christ shall rise again. And Jesus even said, like I said, in John 11, verse 11 through 14, which I'm not going to go over, that the Bible says that, you know, that he describes death as a sleep. It's an unconscious sleep. And we already know the heavens, when they pass away, when the heavens be no more, it's talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ. What happens to the righteous dead in, in, in the second coming of Jesus Christ? And it says, Revelation 22, verse 12, Behold, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to their works. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17, The Lord himself would descend from heaven with a shout. That means Jesus Christ is pumped that he's come, that he's finally get to come for his people, and everything's done and accomplished, and he's excited to come back. He said he would give a shout, and the trumpet of God shall descend, and, and, and the dead in Christ will rise. Eyes, and thus we shall always be with the Lord means we will never be separated again from God verse Corinthians verses 15 51 through 53 we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of the eye and the dead in Christ and the dead will be raised incorruptible for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality which means we don't have more immortality yet it is a gift of God that gave us we must wait for the, the second coming of Jesus Christ. And what was the devil's lie in the beginning? In Genesis 3 verse 4, the serpent, the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. And many people are teaching, preachers, false pastors, false uh, uh, prophets are teaching that you are a lie after you die, which is a lie. That is not what the Bible teaches. Wake up, my people. Come out of Babylon. That's what the Bible says. Why is this teaching important? Because the devil will use this teaching to deceive many people in the last days. Imagine Satan coming as Christ, as a false Messiah himself, the one world government, and he uses the demonic uh, demons to impersonate your dead loved ones and say, hey, Johnny, I'm Jesus come right now. He's, he's here right now. Imagine that scene. He will do that in the last day to see if he will himself can turn into an angel of light. So his last great deception is to unite the world underneath this one world religion, underneath false Christianity that for one, changing God's Sabbath day, trying to change a God day that he anointed, he blessed and he changed and Satan used 
for Sunday. He changed it to Sunday. Because why? Because when you think you're honoring God on that day, you're really honoring him because song worship is paganism. And then when you die, people are teaching that you go to heaven or hell. You are allowing Satan for spiritualism to come in effect. That's why spiritualism is present in the movies, wizards, and all this type of stuff, magic that they're trying to get your kids indoctrinated with. You are falling into the same trap. Wake up, people. Wake up. Read your Bible. Read your Bible because the word of God is very clear on the subject and the devil's not playing checkers. He's playing chess. So if you're not deep rooted into the word of God, you will be deceived. And does the devil really work miracles? Revelation verse 16, verse 14, for they are spirits of devils working miracles. Matthew 24 verses 24, false Christ and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders to deceive if possible the elect. That means if you're not deeply worded in the truth of the word of God and you don't understand this, you will be deceived. Wake up and read the Bible. Why would God people not be deceived? Re they receive the word with all readiness and research and search the scriptures daily. Isaiah 8 verses 20. And they speak not according to his word is because there is no light in them. Back in Moses day, what did they do to the people that did witchcraft on the stuff? It says in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 27, a man or woman who is a medium who has familiar spirits shall surely be put to death. They shall be stoned with them with stones, which means God is not playing with this subject because the devil is using this deception to deceive many. And, and, and what's going to happen is when Jesus comes back, the dead in Christ shall rise and they should no more die and you should have eternal life. Well, I want you guys to understand this subject because why it's very important because the devil is going to use the subject to deceive many people. So I just want to say this, may God bless you and keep you and may him, may he open these truths up because I am trying to do the best I can to share the truth and don't just take what I say, research the Bible yourself and common eat for me. Even if you might disagree with what I'm saying, which is hard to believe because the Bible is very clear that have, don't let your heart be hardened. Accept Jesus Christ, your savior, accept the truth of the Bible and you will be saved. You will be okay. You guys have a blessed day. God bless you, you guys. Take care.